Okay, perfect. So uh, thanks everybody for joining us here today. My name is Emily and I'll be presenting with uh, Elise and Regan as Wayne had mentioned. And so um, this project is called Assessing the Capacity of municipalities to respond to agricultural issues and priorities in the Greenbelt. Um, and so before I dive into today, today's content, I'd like to thank the Greenbelt Foundation and OMAFRA for their continued support in this project. So um, have you ever wondered what resources municipal planning departments have to respond to their community's day-to-day -day priorities and long range strategic directions, uh, especially within the agricultural sector? Think about climate change or protecting water quality and quantity, farmland preservation, environmental protection, dealing with development pressure, amongst so many other topics. And you can see that um, on the screen, these are all priorities that should be addressed to help plan for successful outcomes in agriculture and agri-food. Now think about the varying level resources that municipalities have to actually address these challenges, whether it be budgets, number of staff, or council's priorities or perspectives which impact the decisions that they make. So how do these varying levels of capacity um, impact the, uh, the capacity, knowledge, or willingness of municipalities to plan for successful outcomes in agriculture? Well, that's what we're here to present to you today. Our study provides the first inventory of municipal capacity to respond to agricultural priorities across the Greenbelt. Uh, we use surveys of municipal planning directors and elected officials, as well as interviews with planners in 66 municipalities in the Greenbelt to answer some of these questions. So what exactly is capacity? Uh, for the purpose of this study, we define capacity as the ability to use internal and external resources available either formally or informally at both government and greater community levels to respond to agricultural and agri-food issues. So examples are far ranging, but some include staff knowledge or experience with agriculture, either professional or personal, community partnerships or relationships, once again, either formal or informal, and the number of planners in a department. All right, so the next few slides highlight a, a small selection of our survey results. The first slide here is the response to the question, how frequently does the planning department or council deal with agriculture and agri-food related issues? And the main takeaway here is that planners and elected officials deal with agriculture and agri-food issues quite frequently. Planners indicated that they deal with them on a daily or weekly basis and elect elected officials less frequently. Next slide, please. So this slide shows the answer to the question, is there an agricultural advisory committee in your municipality? And you can see that it's much more common for upper and single tier municipalities to have access to an agricultural advisory committee and less frequent for lower tier municipalities. And this is an important resource to um, all planning staff as well as other departments within the municipality and elected officials in terms of creating that connection with the agricultural community and understanding agricultural issues and priorities. Next slide, please. All right, and this question is when an agricultural issue arises that council is unfamiliar with, who does council tune to for advice? The key takeaway here is that 86% of respondents said they look to advice from staff followed by higher levels of government. So OMAFRA or MNRF or the MMAH. Um, and then also of note is that there, there's another category at the far right on your screen. And in this category is several responses that indicated contacting members of the farming community directly. So reaching out to agricultural producers, phoning them or attending agricultural advisory committee meetings. Okay, so um, in our interviews with planners, we identified a number of themes that we categorized as either contributors to capacity or challenges to capacity. So we've displayed some of these up on the screen and we won't have time to speak to all of these in detail today um, and rather go through them in detail. We thought that we'd actually have Elise and Regan share a story of each from their interviews to give you all an idea as to what municipal planners are dealing with. So uh, I think I'll start with Elise. Elise, is there a either an example of a contributor or a challenge to capacity that you'd like to speak to? Sure, so I think the one that I'll touch on today is cross-departmental awareness of agriculture. Um, so this is a theme that emerged um, among our planners who mentioned that uh, there would be value in ensuring that the economic development department and the building department and public works department, um, among a number of others, uh, 
should have some understanding of, of how the agricultural sector functions and uh, even the intersection of their work um, with the agricultural sector. So one example of this came from a lower tier municipality that mentioned um, that some farmers had some frustration with public works uh, with the, the removal or installation of snow fencing, for example. So simple activities, activities happening kind of on the ground locally um, and making sure that various departments understand kind of what their role is and how it intersects with, um, with agricultural operations and, and making sure they understand kind of those broader processes as well. So I thought that was kind of interesting. And um, one way to, to foster cross-departmental awareness would be to make sure that those other departments are included in things like agricultural um, farm tours and farm visits to make sure that they have access to some of that learning also. Mm -hmm. That's a prime example. It really just goes to illustrate that, you know, planning for success in agriculture actually goes beyond just the planning department. Uh, so Regan, is there an example of either a um, challenge or contributor to capacity you'd like to speak to? Yeah, so maybe I'll talk to a challenge to capacity, the lack of staff resources. And I'm thinking of lower tier municipalities like Amaranth or Erin or Brock and upper tier municipalities like Northumberland, um, where the staff capacity is limited to maybe only one planner, maybe two, or in some cases, no planner at all. And the difference that makes in terms of talking about um, agri-food and agricultural capacity when we were having interviews with those planners there's kind of this like what do you mean what kinds of activities can we be doing for the agricultural community or how do we consider them like all we're, we're trying to do is keep up to the with the day-to-day -day processing of applications and updates to policy and we don't really have time to think about these additional things and I think that lack of staff resources really comes into play in those municipalities both upper tier and lower tier that don't have enough staff um, to to spend time on things outside of those kind of day-to-day -day or processing activities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's also, it kind of raises questions about, you know, how do you actually plan for the future and where you wanna be when you're just trying to juggle your everyday tasks? Um, Elise, how about we, how about you take us through an example of a challenge? Sure, so, so I'll bring it to another challenge and I think we'll circle back to a contribution again. Um, so, so I'll touch on complex jurisdictional setting that you see there. Uh, so this kind of emerged among our planners in the Greenbelt who are working with an abundance of policies, of course. So the Provincial Policy Statement, Greenbelt Plan, Oak Ridge's Moraine Plan, Niagara Escarpment, and this kind of, this broad sweep of policies. And then of course, at the local level, having your official plans and your other various uh, policies and regulations. Um, and planners mentioning that this becomes challenging when communicating with council and ensuring that they understand who's responsible for what and kind of what regulations are coming into play. Um, and then also communicating with the public and, and kind of a struggle keeping on top of things. And this emerges particularly at the lower tier level, um, you know, when planners have mentioned to us that it, it's so difficult to navigate this, that the agricultural community themselves ends up taking on the burden of kind of figuring this out and navigating it. And, some planners expressing that they shouldn't have to do that and, and we should be able to kind of work through things but are, are struggling with capacity and, and simply unable to always uh, be on top of everything. So, um, you know, one planner mentioning that farmers are just in a state of burnout almost and exhaustion from, from keeping on top of this themselves to ensure, you know, that they can function and it, it's their livelihood, of course, so they're willing to do that. But yeah, so con complex jurisdictional, sorry, setting uh, was definitely mentioned as a, a challenge for many. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it certainly makes you wonder, like, how do farmers actually know who they're supposed to go to? If, you know, they have a certain idea. I even think about like diversified uses. If you're in the NEC, then who are you exact, exactly going to be dealing with and how does that policy differ across the province? So, um, Regan, how about another contributor challenge? Yeah, so I'll, I'll talk about uh, intergovernmental collaboration. And I have a few examples that come to mind for this one. And one is the planners of Dufferin or POD, as they, they like to call themselves. And it's uh, a meeting that Dufferin, Dufferin County puts on for all of the planners um, from their municipality, but also the lower tier. And then they invite different provincial planners or provincial staff to come speak, or they just have meetings where they talk about issues that are shared issues or concerns and kind of come up with a, a more unified um, strategy. And it's also an, a place to bounce ideas off each other and, and see what other municipalities are doing about particular issues. Another thing that came up a lot during the interviews is looking for more guidance from OMAFRA. And that was something that planning staff from a number of different municipalities 
mentioned wanting to strengthen the partnership or the relationship with OMAPRA staff as a, an additional resource in terms of agriculture and agri-food priorities in the province. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's also an excellent um, anecdote there. And so I want to thank you both for sharing those stories. Um, we're going to take you through um, our recommendations now. And so to continue on with this storytelling, we'll actually have Elise and Regan continue speaking to a few stories to illustrate how these particular recommendations on the screen emerged in our research. So either Elise or Regan, please take it away. We can start. So uh, the, the one that I'll touch on um, is, is ensuring that there's a variety of, of resources and learning opportunities for planners particularly ones which are unstructured and ongoing. And so what this kind of gets to is, um, you know, conferences and webinars and, you know, in-person experiences are fantastic farm tours, uh, but oftentimes it's difficult for planners to get out to these things, particularly if they're struggling with capacity um, and needing to be there for the daily operations of the municipality, talking to the public and kind of working through applications. So, um, trying to figure out how to make resources and learning opportunities accessible for planners just over time. So maybe that means a repository of webinars or conference material online that relates to agricultural planning and, and capacity. Um, and just making sure those resources are there kind of long term um, for planners as they go through their career. And as information updates and progresses and policies change, you know, um, just making sure that they can have that continued learning opportunity as time goes on. I can jump in with the, the next example for recommendations. So we had build relationships with the agricultural community. And this is related to a couple different themes that came out of the interviews. Um, the first being this idea around, would you call a farmer? And I, I mentioned this briefly before, um, but planner or farmers are resources to planners. And you can call a farmer to ask for advice, or if you're not sure exactly how a policy might play out or, um, just wanting more information about the agricultural community, phoning a farmer is totally an option. But another really great resource is, att is attending agricultural advisory meetings or going to the agricultural community. And that's something that came out of Gray County. And that was a, an interview Elise had, and she kind of coined the term, the culture of agriculture. And that was something that came up a lot is this kind of connection with the agricultural community and feeling that that's part of the munici municipality. And that really helps build, build in that capacity. All right, so with that, I think we'll move on to the next slide and looking to next steps. So as this project is coming to an end, we have our final report available on Wayne's website and the Greenbelt Foundation is publishing an occasional paper that should be available uh, within the next month or so, I believe. Um, but we're really excited that OMAFRA will be funding the extension of this project to the rest of the province and that includes Northern Ontario. And we're really excited to learn about how capacity varies across the province. We know the Greenbelt is a very unique area of the province. And so getting to hear from the municipalities beyond the Greenbelt will be really important in understanding how capacity varies across the province. Um, next slide, please, Emily. So with that, we have a few kind of reflective questions for the audience and I'll, I'll read them off. And then maybe if you wanna put your recommendations or comments in the chat or unmute yourself or raise your hand um, as a way to kind of address these, that would be really helpful. But the first question we have is how can we start to measure or monitor the impacts of varied capacity? So we know that there is varied capacity, but we don't have a really good handle on how to measure that. Like we can get anecdotal stories on a municipality feels that they don't have staff resources or there, there is an expertise within or about the agricultural community but how can we start to measure that? So looking at things like the age of municipal planning documents, number of types of agricultural and agri-food initiatives or perceptions from the agricultural community. So going to farmers and asking them how supported do you feel by your municipality could be a starting point, but we're looking for recommendations for other ways that we could start to measure that capacity. The second question is sources for quantitative data. So we've been using surveys as our primary tool to collect quantitative data. So that's like how many planners do you have on staff? What's your, your planning department budget? That sort of information. And we were looking at the financial information return data for municipalities we didn't hear back from through the survey, but there's quite a few inconsistencies with the financial information return data. And in the cases where we don't hear back from a municipality or where maybe there isn't a planner on staff and we don't have that concrete contact, what other places can we look for that quantitative data? And then the final question is, for the agricultural toolkit, toolkit for municipalities we're looking at building, what kinds of information should be included? What are the priorities for 
for that toolkit. And yeah, just kind of a starting point for how we can go about creating that. 